Thank God we have, we have the vision of labor here in our church. Where the eldest member of the siblings, they're responsible even to the lowest member of the family. The parents showed them the pattern and ways how to do the work while they were little. Then we learned and continued what is shown to us. Then we become responsible to the things we learn from our parents. They watch us grow and becoming men and women of honor, work, and integrity. Now the analogy, like the body of Christ, each one of us has a gift. To give and to share and use it for God. You remember in the New Testament there are five kinds of people in the analogy. God gave to the first one five talents, to the second one two talents, to the third person one talent. The first with five talents, sir, Lord, I have reproduced. I was able to gain five more talents. Good, faithful servant. To the two. I have reproduced, I've gained two more talents. Good to the one with one talent. You are just the right, uh, you are not in the right frame of mind. You are just getting what you have not labored for. And so what I did, I hid my one talent. And God and the, the master was mad. The one with only one talent hid it and lost his reward. His joy and the remorse was there was the gnashing and wailing. Because he lost the opportunity of being active that he should have been in the work of the Lord. I should have been. I must have done. I should have he started this law, but sure. These are all the thoughts of the lost in ones, is law of opportunity. Now, church, this is opportunity for us to get involved and enjoy. You know, there's an application here. The Bible says they go in and out after you got saved and learn the Word of God, after listening and hearing the Word of God, acted upon, upon it as God commanded us to do. Now the application is this. When you receive the life of the Word of God, when I receive it, there is no place for laziness to the work of the kingdom. Everybody is involved into action of praying. Thank God we are a praying church. We're getting the intensity of praying. That's why you are seeing miracle. You are in the area of sharing your testimony. We look at what we are today. Oh, I have come here for the honor of honor. I have to share. I, I, can, I can do something about sharing about my, my Lord. Share your testimony. Or in giving. Or united effort through friendship with people outside our church. Find someone your friend many years ago and connect with them association with the unbelievers to make Jesus known to them eventually do right away when you got the talent distributed by God to you do it for the community so the harvest is plenteous third the door of prayer is open to anybody who would take this opportunity to do Somebody says, prayer is the key, but faith is the one that unlocked the door, and Jesus is the rewarder. We need more prayer warriors today than any centuries, because the devil is working double time, but God will arise, the enemies will be scattered. You cannot understand fully the importance of prayer until you experience an intimate relationship with God in your life. This is a daily communication, whether you are working or busy in your activities in life. It is a kind of prayer, the door of prayer is open, an intense prayer in a close relationship with your maker that is so dear to you. There come a time in your life, in your prayer fellowship with God, sometimes you forget to eat your lunch in your dinner, just have time with your Lord and Master. There will come a time when you feel in love. When you're in love with your wife now, when you're supporting your wife, vice versa, even one hour is very long not to communicate to her, to him. Maybe one day or one, uh, you know, one month is very, very long. There come a moment in time where if you don't have prayer, intense 
intimate with God. For me, if I don't have prayer after my preaching, after my preaching here, presentation to you, I have to communicate with my father. So the following day, I am ready. That's my because if I will just pour out what God has given to me and bless God bless you, and then I take easy going tomorrow, the devil said, "Aha, Ghana is ready," and there to be attacked. So I have to be prepared in my life. And by doing so, God will reveal His heart to you in the prayer room. He will reveal His heart in plans to the seeker and the one reverentially fear and love Him. The apostle said, Lord, teach us to pray. So the opportunity, the door of opportunity for you to pray without ceasing is open as you ask the Lord to help you to pray according to His will. Verse 8, Jesus revealed Himself as historian, and he said, I know your deeds. You have little power, in verse 8. You have little power. You have kept my word and have not denied my name. I want you to visualize, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 8, the condition of the church. First, they have little strength. You see that? Okay. Little strength. Secondly, they have kept the word, and third, they have not denied the Lord Jesus Christ three things. They have very small power, and yet they were consistent to their commitment. Visualized. She had a very little political clout or connection or influence. Now in today's time, if you don't have a political clout or connection into the politician today, and no influence in the business circle, or to the professional world as believers, you felt like you are useless. Now it's better, better for Mani Pacquiao because the politician in the Philippines gathered around him because of his fame, because of his money, and because of his influence. But without these things, if you don't have any association or connection with the people on, on the top, you are nobody. Now the church, I want you to hear this, even they have very small amount of power, they were not paralyzed because of their little influence. We know they have little money and they have little strength. Now the Bible is very clear. They continued to what God has opened for them. And they became responsible. The promise is given in verse 10. Look at verse 10. Jump to verse 10. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. What a blessing! You continue to be faithful in this small um, amount of your power. You're committed to me, to your prayer, to your commitment to share, or, and to, to, you know, to keep my word. The promise is given. I will also keep you in the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. Now, there are two churches in the book of Revelation that praised highly by the Lord. One is Myrna, was poor in oppressed. Philadelphia church had but little power. But I want you to say that is Myrna, okay, and built us life for Smyrna, honor and dignity for Philadelphia are promised for these two churches by Jesus Christ in, that, in that both cities. You know, I want you to jump here now. God keep His promise to keep them strong in the midst of to keep us strong in the midst of what is happening around us. He will preserve us regardless of what is going on in the world today. Now the question is, what is our response to the testing of our time? I want you to visualize. I want you to imagine now. Some of you this afternoon, maybe you have multiple problems that are weakening you. And I don't know that. It's between you and your Lord. Maybe others are tired to remain dedicated Christian. So to some, either outside of other church, whatever, or in any one of us. So they are tired of being dedicated Christians. So to stay neutral or uncommitted is the, is the best for them. God seems that listening and rescuing, and so they are just remain neutral. Other experience physical pain or suffering, 
because of sickness or maybe overwork, you are tired of going around and, and they are at the point of giving up. I don't know. To others, church is just a cycle, it's a routine going on and on and on, boring, and not giving them what they crave for, like the physical satisfaction, vices, wine, and good parties, and sex, and, and all the money, and beautiful places of the world, and big homes, plus investment, church, is like a boring cycle that's going the same and over and over again. Many see the church like a negative place to be, and the Word of God is always talking about your weaknesses. No, it is a lie from Satan 